Look, we back again. Uh, this is Tony Barker with Barker Gray Inc. Um, this is the Mind Your Own Process podcast. Uh, this is my cousin, uh, Buddha, um, real name of Kill. His brother, look, it's, this is a blessing. I'm not gonna lie to you. This, this is my older cousin. He, he taught me everything as a kid. You know, I used to watch him coming up. Um, and this brother had did time. Um, and the fact that he's an entrepreneur, he came out, did his time. And like he, he told me earlier before everything started, this is a journey. He's his own boss. Like, had the Jaguar outside. <laughs> this is a real man who, who came from the bottom of the bottom and went through a process and now it's like a diamond in the rough. Like really, you know, so kill. Hey man, thanks for having me. God, so um, for those who don't know, uh, you know, like where are you from? Well, I was born and raised initially in uh, Cherry Hill um, at about 89, 90, moved to Westport. And from there, you know, we have uh, been many, many places. Understandable, understandable. Yeah. So like the whole point of this podcast is, 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 is to focus on enhancing people's mindset and change people's mindset so they can change their own uh, circumstances. Definitely. Got it. So a man, like I said, I watched you grow up um, and I saw you like, you know, even watching your fish, right. you know, I saw how you always operated from a man's point of view. like. How did, what, what got you to that, that mindset, like, I got to go do for self? Actually, and, you know, it's only two people that I can, uh, you know, equate this back to, man. And first and foremost, yeah. Mari Turner. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mari Turner, my grandma. And then second, you know, my mom. So, like, I was explaining to my children, I said, listen, right? I said, and it's not to take anything away from, you yeah. know, the love that granny had for none of her grandkids. Right, right. <laughs> I said, but coming from being the first grandson, Mm. It's a difference. What? You get a different experience. Complete. Because man, Abney, we was the first grandkids. Right. So we did a lot with this lady. And we, you know, we we've been up, we rubbed our feet, we went everywhere. She, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like we went everywhere that yeah. she went to, We went with Granny. And so it was a lot of morals and principles that she instilled in us that not saying that um it missed the other grandkids, mm-hmm. but it was like hands on, it was like right there, like Yeah. Mm. And that's real. You know, and it was like, oh, okay. And then from then on, you know, it trickled down to um you know, my mom. So a lot of things that I do today, you know, you can ask my wife, she'll tell you like, it comes straight from my mom. God. The way I wake up in the morning, the way I get dressed, the way I conduct myself, the way I can, you know, I work yeah. my home. This come from my mom. And how do you like, and, and when you wake up, like what's the, I know people always talk about like, I get up at four, I get up at three. What time do you usually get up? Like what's your daily routine when you get up? Yeah, well, you know, um, you know, it's, 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 it's commonly known amongst people who are entrepreneurs, man. Right. You sleep when time permits. Ooh. So whenever time I get to sleep, I get to sleep. When I don't sleep, I don't sleep. Like right. yesterday, last night was the first day I got some sleep in and in, in, um, in two days. God. Yeah, I'm up. You, when, when the money call, I answer. It's, it's, no, I'm, I'm, it, it's not a such thing as I'll call you back. Or right. I'm not going to be able to be there. No, when they call, I answer. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm on my way. Yeah, so I, you know, like, honestly, last night was the first night that I got some, and I'm here because, you know, I was doing a podcast with, with my cousin. Right. You know, but last night was the first night I got about six or seven hours of sleep, you know, I got in. And, and that's, got that's, some, that's probably the first night of lots of lost sleep. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, two, three hours a day. Got it. And it was like the process coming up, because I know we refer to Granny, that's our grandmother, uh, and Mom Millie, his mother, uh, I was just... Put you in that 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 put that mindset. Okay, this is how you operate. This is how you maintain a household, um, and then how you operate now as an entrepreneur. What would like the beginning stage is like because um, I'm going to touch on you know on, on the prison situation later. Definitely. But what was like the process prior to that? Like, okay, this is how I operate. How did you operate prior to you changing yourself? Like as far as like your daily routine, like just how to help how you work out yourself. Yeah. So um, one of my biggest things is um, I believe that. Once you, um, I believe that once once you realize what you want for yourself mm-hmm. and how you want your life to go, it's only a matter of just doing it. You know, so it's really no such thing as I want. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I don't, do it. Get it done. You know, that's how I feel. I just just get it done. So whatever it is that you feel like you want to do, get it done. There's no 
I'm, I'm going to do it or I want to do it. No, get it done. Right. Get it done. So every day I wake up with that mindset. Mm. Right. Not that I got things that I'm going to do. No, I mean, things I want to do. No, I'm going to do it. Do it. When I wake up, I'm saying, this is what I'm doing. This, 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 that. And I'm getting it done. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? No, I understand perfectly. You know, now sometimes it don't always play out to where I'm able to uh, achieve everything I want to achieve in one day. But guess what's the first thing on my list in the next morning? The next I'm getting that done. Mm. I'm getting that done. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's my mindset. That's my mindset. Every every single day I wake up with things that I'm that that I'm going to get done. I like that because I remember listening to a, a Fifty Cent interview, and Fifty Cent said um, he don't consider anything greedy or a person being greedy if they actually apply themselves to what they want. Facts. Yeah, a lot of people I see, period. Just in, in regards to where they come from, application is always the hardest thing. Yeah, application is this major man. Like application, I, application is major, man. Because you know we, we hear a lot of you know we call it lip service, man. <laughs> we hear a lot of people talk about a lot of things, right? You know, and, 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 and me personally, you know, I don't look down on another individual. So if a person, um, if a person feel like you know they want to work, um, you know, work a middle class job and drive yeah. a, a Toyota Camry, <laughs> Camry is a good car, right? Camry a good car, a middle class, you know, a nice single family home, middle mm -hmm. class. That's not a bad thing. But that's not what I aspire for myself. Right. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not real. what I aspire for myself. That's real. So I'm never going to look down on a person because they have those dreams, and those goals, and those aspirations. But what I'm saying is, I'm going to strive to do more. Mm. That's my mindset. That makes sense. I'm trying to push forward. Right. You know. So for order, in order for you to go to where you really want to go at, you as an individual, oh no, you're striving for more. I'm striving for more. God, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, I'm striving for more because you can't tell me that you know. Um, so right now we're in a, a nice building, and I'll just. You know, um, I'll just say, so say for instance, if this building, the level went up 10 floors, mm -hmm. right? But they telling us that there's another two floors up top that we can't reach. I'm going up there. I'm going up there. I need to see what's up there. Right. You ain't going to tell me that this building has 12 floors, but we only allowed to go 10. What's on the other two floors? Mm -hmm. I need to see. Uh, that's, I need to see what's up there. That's the type of mindset. Yeah, you gotta have that mindset, bro. You gotta have that mindset, cuzzo. You know what I mean? You know, because if you limit yourself to those 10 floors, then you're always, you wanna go through through life saying to myself, so what was up on them other two floors? 100%. You know? That's real. Why couldn't I go there? So that's my mindset is I gotta go there. I'm gonna figure out a way to get there. Yeah. I ain't gonna do nothing illegal to get there. No, but <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna break in. Then. No, <laughs> but, you, but you understand the point. Yeah, so that's the point of the matter. You know, you gotta aspire to do more for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's if you want more for yourself. Right. You know, if you want more. That's for if yourself. you want more for yourself. And I think that, that, that's the that's the point of it. Is like you gotta really want more for yourself. Sometimes I, I heard Les Brown say this one time. He said sometimes um, life will move on you. If life really wants you to do something, life will move on you. He yeah. said, but if you're like if you don't want it, but that's for certain people. That don't happen to everybody else. Right. But the point of what you're saying is for everybody in the general collective, you gotta move on yourself. They have to. Cause that's that's wild. Yeah. So going toward, you know, like I said, you, you did what, 13 years or 12? Well, I did 12 years um federal prison, then turned around and did one year um halfway house. God, now what was that process? Because that's a different mindset change. Yeah. You lost 12 years of your life. It's yeah. like, man, people not even just saying, not even putting them on blast, but you had people who've been out for 12 plus years in the same positions. Yeah, same, I see them all the time. Yeah, so how did, what was your mindset when you went inside and what was the transition? Um, going inside from the beginning, I was, I went in from a place of, of anger. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I went in from a place of, of, of anger. Um, and then I realized, you know, um, that if, I ever, if I if I ever want something out of life, then I have to sit down and and under and, and get a better understanding of myself, the things I want to achieve, and my purpose. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, and like I said, you know, like I, I, I you know, I always you'll hear me talk a lot about my grandma. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my grandma, she wrote me so many letters. You know what I mean? Like if you look at <laughs> the letters that Granny wrote me, man. Sure, every you know day. What I mean? Man, she back. So many letters granny wrote me. I didn't know that. Like granny wrote me letters every man, every month or every other month, man, for what? all of those years, bro. I did not and for yeah, her to be that consistent right. and it still take it everything yeah, down. For all them years, I got tons and tons of letters from Granny. Wow. You know what I mean? Like I got a whole pictures, letters just from Granny. I separate all her stuff. I did not it's know. It's just that. hers. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, um, 
you know, my grandma, she kept me focused, man. You know what I mean? My mom, she kept me focused. You know what I mean? Shout out to my wife. You know, she a soldier. She stood strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? She took care of them kids. She brought them kids everywhere I went from Atlanta to Raybrook, New York, Beckley, West Virginia, um, uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey, Petersburg, Virginia, and she never let up. God, that's she, she never let up, man. That's a you real know woman. I mean? That's a real woman, man. You know, you know, so, um, you know, so once I found purpose, you know, um, it, it sort of, it sort of changed my, you know, changed my perspective on everything. Uh -huh. And so I'll tell you, right? So I went from, and, and the guys, they used to be looking at me like I was crazy. Right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you why, right? right? Everybody running around with the guys that got the 15 to 20 in the years. Everybody that want to do the workout and all that yeah. stuff. I'm running around with a guy named Lenny that I told you. Yeah. So a, sh a shout out to my man, Lenny. So I was telling, because before that, I met a guy. Um, his name was his name was Lenny. And um, he actually owned so much real estate, you know, in, uh, in, in the Florida. And he was like a multi-millionaire, right? So why everybody running around with the thugs? Guess who was my buddy was? It was Lenny. Because he told me real estate. He told me what compound interest was. Um, he told me investments. He told me, he told me stocks. He told me bonds. He told me mutual funds. Jeez. You understand what I'm saying? So my whole perspective was opposed to chasing the things that got me in prison. I'm gonna chase this education mm -hmm. because I'm gonna be successful. Right. There's nobody, there's nobody can tell me that I'm not gonna be successful. Right. I'm gonna get it done, cuz though. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's clear, I'm gonna get it done. Exactly. And that's not speaking from a, a point of arrogance or nothing like that. It's what I'm willing to sacrifice to get it done. Right. Right. I'm willing to risk it all. Right. Yeah, go all. Yeah, well, I, I'm willing to risk it all. And I tell people it's because of this. See, a person don't understand. So we have our family. Mm -hmm. And within our family, we have small families. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know, That's you know we come from a big family. And then, you know, I got my wife. I got our kids and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right? subsections. Right. So my family, they depend, they depend on me to lead the flock. So let's say if I came home and I decided that I want to go back on the corner and I wanted to, you know, do everything that a man not supposed to do. Right. What type of example that I'll be set for these guys? Nothing. Right. Not only for you know, not only for my my family, you know, um, you know, my just little core family. But what about like my cousin right here yeah. and our other cousins? You know what I mean? So I said from from that point on, anything that they know about me, it's going. I'm gonna erase it out of their mind. Guess why? Because all they gonna see is positivity. You ain't gonna hear me talking negative. You're not gonna see me doing nothing negative. You're not gonna hear about me interacting in nothing um, negative. Everything's gonna be positive. So when you think about your cousin, you gonna be saying. Real, uh, you just because of because of because of doing positive, really doing it. you know, and, and that's the that was one of the main reasons why I approached I'm like, if you can do it, they can do it, yeah. If, like, literally, if you if you're doing all this and the fact that you change yourself, and I saw you, yeah, definitely. I, I remember the dirt bikes, and, you know, <laughs> the four wheelers coming down the hill, it's like 30 guys yeah, with dreads, man. everybody. I remember those days yeah, with man. the dirt bikes in the back of the house and show back. So like, I remember those days. So it's like to see the transition to see you outside with the Jaguar. Yeah. That thing nice. It's like, wow. Like yeah. that's a, that's another indication. Like you can really do it if you actually change your mindset. You got to change your mindset, man. And you have to educate yourself because, um, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen the list, but they said that, that Baltimore, we was like top five of the people with like the, the um uh like low education or something grammar wise really yeah and i, and I, I heard that yeah before. in terms of grammar in terms grammar of speech like, the worst. like it's like the worst yeah so in my mind is you know like you know i went and i took those classes you know what i mean like i took over 100 classes while i was in there and i completed all of them and i, I never missed a day mm -hmm. i never not only did i miss a day i never was late yeah, that's you, right. you focus on that right. process. Right, so I focus on that process because I knew that I'll get out and I'll be talking to different business people. I got to speak to banks, lenders, investors. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know I have to be able to pitch, you know, whatever it is that I'm trying to uh, to achieve at a time. Mm -hmm. So I can't go on there with, you know, talking like I'm from Baltimore. Right. You know what I mean? So if you never was the man, I mean, you didn't know I was from Baltimore. A hundred percent. You know, because I'm going to dress up, I'm going to put on, you know, my, 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 my nice attire, nice, mm -hmm. nice watches and stuff like right. that, nice shades. And I'm going to go on and I'm going to sit down with you and you're going to think you're talking to the guy that, that graduated one of these, these nice schools. I, I like you put the work you in. You know? Yeah. The education. Yeah, but I graduated Westport Char Hill. <laughs> 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 and that's where I graduated from. That is real. Yeah. From a person, and I look at it from both perspectives, right? Right. You really were like, you really were in the streets, but you changed your life in a way. It's like, I wasn't in the streets at all. Right. You know, but just the, the experience of our our background coming up out there, um, and just for me to go to college, for me to graduate law school, but Definitely. it's like you see two levels, but we meet. 
Yeah, yeah. And we come from the same from environment. The same right. That shows like it's too, either way you either way you choose. The point of it is do something positive with yourself. Definitely. Um, like what was the first thing you did once you got out? Um, the first thing that I did, and it's funny. Let me go back. Let me go, uh, go ahead. Go back. Go back. Just, just, just a second. Just a second. So, um, when I was in prison, um, I uh, graduated from this program called the LCP program. So it was okay. called the Life Connection program. Life Connection. So they said that if you enroll in this program and you, um, um, you know, complete the program, they'll give you up to uh, a year halfway house. Really? Yeah. So I thought, oh, okay. Well, let me let me see what it's about. So I went inside of it, and it was really like a a faith based pro program. Everybody had their own different um, faiths and so forth and so on, and you congregate amongst each other. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go do lessons and stuff like that. They had um, a different you know curriculum and stuff like that that everybody had to complete mm -hmm. in order to Did get you? out of there. And okay. also, you have to um, you know have like groups and things like this. Right. So the last time we spoke. Right, the last group, you know, yeah. they want anybody to speak because we was graduating, and so they was like, "Well, you know, um, so what is the first thing you gonna do when you get out?" Right? Yeah. So everybody said they gonna do this, they gonna do that, they gonna do that, they gonna do this, they gonna do that. So, right? I said, "Well, the first thing I'm gonna do when I get out is what? I'm gonna get a job." Uh, so they said <laughs> the first day. I said, "Yeah, the first day. The first day I'm gonna get a job." Right? Mm -hmm. And so what's crazy? I mean, what's ironic about it is, right? Of course, we knew that I wasn't gonna get a job the first yeah. day. The possibilities of me getting a job. The first thing I got to come out, I got to get, um, you know, my ID situated. Yeah, yeah, you got to stay in the society. Right. But my mindset was, right, I'm going to get out. The, the first day, I'm going to be focused on being successful. Mm -hmm. So that was the more of the story. It wasn't about just getting a job the first day. But the first thing, the, but on my, my mindset was that I'm focused on being successful. I'm not worried about going home and going to see my kids. I'm going to see my kids, of course. Yeah. I'm not worried about going and put on the nice shoes. No, I'm going to do all that stuff when, when time permits. But the first day, I'm, you know, so everybody laughing, this and that, this and that. So fast forward it, back to the halfway house, right? Right. Crazy experience, crazy experience, crazy, crazy. Um, so I went um, to the halfway house in Delaware. I didn't even want to be in Baltimore. Good. Right. I want to change my whole environment because I knew that I went somewhere else. I'll give myself a running chance. Right. Don't put me back. I don't want to. Don't you know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 this, I come from this town. I come from this. I know how this town. You, you know, save, yeah, save I see. Put, put me somewhere outside of my box. You know what I mean? And so I just told you I I was in five or six different prisons, so yeah. I can pretty much adapt to anywhere. So Fact. so what's the difference that you put me in being inside or outside? That's me well. I'm gonna make it happen. That's my mom. My nigga, put me where I'll be alright. That's real. Yeah, you know, with a bus line that. Now you know I cut. You know cause I, I know I buses and stuff like that. I know. With a bus line that. Show me where the train that. Show me how to get That's to the change within itself. Right. Show me how to get to um. You know the the place where they got the job the job centers and all that stuff. Show me how to get there. I'm not worried about. It. I'll walk there if I have to. I don't know nobody there. That's the process. That's the process. You really, you you commit hundred percent. Yeah, so that hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. It was hundred percent. I'm used to having nice cars since I was young. Yeah, you know what I mean. Nice, nice cars. I can barely steal the. I remember wheel. that. I can barely steal the steering wheel. I remember. So for me telling you, like, listen, I'm going to give me give me bus fare. I'll take a bus pass. It's really I'm committing to the change. That's commit wow. to the change. To your point, and it's, this caught me right. Mm -hmm. I listened to Jay Z. I listened to Fifty Cent. I listened to Nipsey Hussle. All three of them said. Uh, well, probably mine and Jay-Z to an extent, but all three of them, both, all, literally all three of them said, I had to give up certain things in order to get here. You have to. Like, even, I remember Nipsey Hussle saying, he remembered when he, he, he committed to the process of becoming a rapper, and he stopped hustling, and he, he stopped losing money, he had to, you know, hold, uh, I guess keep kind of like $20 or something like that to mm -hmm. eat. And people were looking at him like, he fell off, yeah. he fell off. But he said he was so pure with it. 50 Cent said the same thing. He said, in order for me to provide the same lifestyle for my family, I had to sell everything. I had to really commit to being a rapper for, for like 100% everything. All three of them said the same exact thing in the sense of committing to the process. You have and to commit. Seeing this and hearing what you're saying, it's like, man, that's wild. Yeah, you got to commit to the process, man. And so, you know, um, to tell you the story, the smaller piece of story that I was going to tell you. So right. it's crazy, man. So um, like I said, I'm in a happy house. In, uh -huh. in, in, in Delaware, I know like a couple guys that I was in with, you right. know what I mean? I um, really don't know anybody. So um, this is, uh, I'm there for one week. One week? I'm okay. there one week. So I'm upstairs, um, taking my shower, doing my whatever, because my wife used to come back and forth down, mm -hmm. you know, all the time. Yeah. So I'm taking my shower and all that stuff, get myself together. So I come downstairs, so a guy said, said what you doing, uh, be more? So I was like, I ain't doing nothing, man. He said, man, you got a job yeah. fair going on um, up at this, at this place, man, you want to go? I was like, man, I ain't even know about no job fair. You know what I mean? He was like, yeah, man, about 15, 20 of you going, you know, so you're trying to go. So I was like, yeah, let me run upstairs, go get my stuff. Right upstairs when he got my packet. Right. Because then I'm saying I'm I'm prepared already. Yeah. I'm prepared. You so prepared. when he got my 
you know, so you had everything situated. Already situated. When I got my packing, come downstairs, get dressed, you know, get dressed, go out and check, check out and all that stuff. So make a long story short, 15 of us, we get to the job. We get to the job um, interview because it wasn't even a job fair. It was an interview. A real interview. A real interview at the time at a supermarket. Wow. And this, this is this is wild. Yeah, this is a week. This is a week. This is a week in. In the, in the, in the halfway house. Okay. You know. So. And I'm, 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 yeah. In my mind, I'm going back to when you when you were in that, that meeting at LCP and you said, I'm going to get me a job. Right. As soon as I get out. As soon as I get out. The first weekend. First weekend. First weekend. So I go up there. So make a long story short, out of, out of 15 guys, I'm the only one walked away with the job because I was prepared. I had a resume. I had a um, GED, high school diploma. I had trades that I achieved. I had so much stuff that it, it was no way they can turn me around. God. I'm the only one that got the job out of everybody. Out of it, had other, it had other openings. But I'm the only one that got the job. That's the crazy. The very first person. And I stumbled on it because I didn't even know what was going on. That's the point of it. Right. Okay. <laughs> if, if he would have never told you that. Right. Just the point of faith and right. how you, you apply yourself to the circumstances prior to the actual circumstances. Right. That is like, I got the job out of 15 and I didn't even know about it. I didn't know about it. It was crazy. But I'm the only one that showed up prepared. Dang. I had, every, I had everything ready. The lady was like, I, I have to hire you. She said you don't give me another, you don't give me another choice. She said you give you leave me no choice. What she said that she told me she said, <laughs> she said yeah accolades alone it speaks a lot for your character. You know so hired me. You know I worked there. Um, you know first job worked at a supermarket and I'm gonna tell you man like if a person has never experienced a humbling experience, mm -hmm. I'll tell you about this experience. Okay. So I went from worked at a supermarket. Um, they got supermarkets in uh, Delaware they call it Acme. Right, I'm familiar with Acme it. Supermarket. Mm -hmm. I started off pushing carts. It's so here it is a person come from a background where I probably had enough money to literally purchase a supermarket or yeah. or at least be partners with one and yeah. part own it. Right, nah, I was yeah. pushing carts in the parking lot. That's every day in my mind, I was saying to myself, "That's wild." I, said, I smiled every day. I said because these people don't know where I just came from. I just came from people working a month. You know, a, a, a month time. I'm talking about 30 whole days, and they paying you ten dollars a month. God, that's slavery. Ten dollars a month. Now, literally, cause oh, ten dollars a month. And that's still going on. Yeah, it's still going on. So they'll pay you ten dollars to work the entire month. That's crazy. You know what I mean? They got you, you know, in, in all these different immoral situations. So I'm smiling. These people looking at me like, cause at one time a guy, he took a car, he like pushed it like down, yeah. and I looked at him, I smiled at him. That's what I did. That's what I did. I went and got the car and I put it back in the car's going. Where the car's going, cousin? That's I wasn't mad humbling. at anything. I looked at him like, hey, you want to be smart. You know what I mean? That's you know very humbling. Smart. You know, you might be racist or whatever. Yeah. I took the car, you know what I mean? You know, I, I didn't go get it right then and there, so I just kept on doing my little thing. I'm talking about he took that joint and pushed it like halfway down the park. Oh, he, he was, like, he really, he looked, he looked at me with it. What? Yeah, he looked, like, he looked at me with it. He was like, Oh yeah, he, yeah, he flew it all the way down there, right? Yeah. So I looked at him. They kept on going about my business, right? You know what I mean? Pushing, you know, put my cards in it and right. the thing. And then after, you know, after a while, I went down there, I got it. And I kept on, and I didn't feel no type of way about it because I knew that that's not my reality. Right. I had a car pusher, I'm a boss. Right. So I'm not worried about that. That's real. You know what I mean? You have a boss, I'm not a car pusher. That's real. Yeah, I wasn't worried about that at all, you know? So I told my wife, she was laughing at me because I, <laughs> I told her like that day. And she, was like, she was like, for real? I said, yeah, I'm not even angry about it. I said, because that's not my reality. Mm -hmm. You know, for the people that got to start off pushing cars, shout out to them. Right. You know, I respect it. And, and, and doing that, it gave me a whole different understanding of pushing cars. Because it it's not an easy job. It is, you know, you know? It, it is the funny thing. The crazy thing about it is like, I know your background because I've seen you. Right. You know, so to see how you lost everything and then get way more. Definitely. On a positive. And then that's that humbling. That, that experience alone Definitely. is so humbling. Yeah, man. Cause like, cause of like, and the world is gonna see you obviously, but just to see how you became a real man. And you've always been a man, but it's like in a positive, in a legal way, and to go from everything. Cause I remember the big cars. Yeah. I remember the, the cars, and I'm like, I, I remember the <laughs> life like when they was five, man. You're like, yeah. when people didn't have it, you had it. I'm like, like yo, because you good, like. <laughs> and to see you go from that to pushing cars, and then. Not even even a mindset of how you were in the past it was like you better even play with me right. to you how I am I'm like okay you good buddy yeah, yeah. that's 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 a hundred percent commitment to the process and the change in yourself you have to man because you don't realize like a person don't realize right like and, and I told my son this um 
not long ago, mm -hmm. I know a bunch of guys with, with a life sentence. And I know a bunch of guys that got a lot of time, right? Everybody that I know wish that they didn't did wish that they haven't that they didn't do whatever they did to get them in there. Mm -hmm. I haven't met one person that says that, man, I do it again a second time. I had a lot of good guys, I met a lot of good guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So everybody wished that they didn't that they whatever they did that they didn't do it again. You know? That's crazy. And that's that that's what a lot of people need to hear. Right. They wish that they could get in there, man. They wish that they didn't do it. Whatever it was that they did, I don't care for whatever reason. Our person did this to my daughter, or they did something to my mother, or they did. Everybody wished that they didn't do it because now, man, more than likely, a lot of them guys, they're going to die in jail, yeah. man. They're going to they die in prison. Or by the time they get out of there, they'll be so old that they, they just, their whole life is just diminished. They lost everybody. That's crazy. Like, I knew one guy, like, I lied to you not. I, I lied to you not because, you know, I, I keep it all the way official with you. Yeah. It was one guy that I knew. Um, he was locked up for about 30 years. Everybody in his family had passed away. Damn. He had like a daughter and like one son. Son was in and out of foster care all his yeah. life. Daughter, she was like crazy off of pills and all that. That's before Dog. I even knew what pills was. Like I know yeah. now, but when me coming home, I didn't know that people was on pills and stuff yeah. like that. I didn't know I was gone for so long. All right, so she like gone off the pills. He, you know, the yeah. son back and forth in foster care in prison and yeah. all that type of stuff. The mom had passed away. God. And that's all he had. He lost his mom. He lost his his dad, his brothers, he lost his sisters, he lost everybody from Baltimore. How long? How long is he in there? He had thirty years. Damn, he's still touching, bringing it back to you. Yeah. That process of overcoming. Yeah, man. It's different. It's, it's different, man. It's a mindset because of you going through all those guys who weren't doing nothing to get that that CDL job. Yeah. You going back and forth from Baltimore to Delaware and going to school. And Wake up at four a.m. Work. You go to work. You go to school at five, leave five to nine, five to nine, and then you still working. Like, come on, that's different. You had to really tell your boss, like, nah, we are gonna, we gonna make this happen. Yeah, we are gonna make this happen. Like, and I showed them. See, that was the good part about it. You know, yeah. you know, you know, a lot of times when a person come in and they say they this and they say that, you know, when a person be in a higher authority, um, you know, they see a lot of that stuff before. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like, like bad enough, like somebody can come in there and can tell us, like, well, okay, we looking at them like, okay. Like show us, right? And we're not gonna take nothing from you, you know. What I mean, we're not gonna say that you can't do it, but man, show us, like, you know, we done ran into a lot of people that said that they can do they it, they can do it, and you know, a lot of people that do it. I'm 41 years old, right? Um, I retired 50, so I give myself nine years, so I sleep then, yeah, I sleep on the water, right? I sleep in all these nice places, right. You know, to Brazil and and, and, and and France and, you know, all these different places. Yeah. You know, Barcelona and, you know. Yeah, you know that's when I sleep. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's grind time. Right. Right now, it's grind time. Why you got your youth? Yeah, why you got your youth, man. It's, it's, it's grind time. Um, and I don't think, you know, I think that we are our own biggest hindrance. Right. I think that we can only, you know, I think we're the only ones that can stop ourselves. Right. Like, as, as black people, you know, alone, we've been through so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we we been through so much. Like we has been through and uh, overcome so much. Yeah, overcome. And what is, what is it that you think you can't do, and why not? That's the question. You know what I mean? That's real. So in your mind, when a person tells us something they can, you need to re you need to right behind that you ask yourself, why not? Why do I not think that I can do this? And that's that. And no, I'm not even gonna try to answer that question because that would just reinforce an excuse. Right. But. To your point, why not? When you think about our ancestors, I'm like, they were some strong people. Yeah. Cause some of them became millionaires right after slavery. Yeah. I'm like, then that's way worse because you can't lynch. <laughs> you can't like you know, so to see that and to see where we come from, it's like that's a long I don't care how bad we we ain't go through nowhere near nowhere as much. Nowhere near as much as they've been through. I don't care how bad your life was, you know, go back and you do do, do your research and you look at your ancestors and you look at the, the slavery and you look at, you know, all of those different uh, all that stuff. endeavors that they had to... Just burning down your whole town, get shot, everything. Like, they, they did that. Like, yeah. even in the 70s, when you think about the move. Shooting you, killing you, and making your family pay for the bullets that was dispersed from the gun. So your family have to pay the person that I killed that. you. Yeah. They have to pay the person that killed you for using that bullets on you. That's how that's how minute you was of a person to them. That's ridiculous. That's so to be able to come from that to where we at right now, to where we have so many black millionaires and billionaires in this time that we live in, it never been a time like this.